in Stella Academy, a mysterious pastry chef would serve the pastry of knowledge out of nowhere in the school cafeteria. Not only is it delicious, but many students who tasted it ended up as imperial scholars, so it was assumed that eating it would make you instantly smarter, and some students do everything to get a chance to order it. Anya and Becky were using sheep stuffed toys to play as prince and princess, although Anya wanted to use them to play a battle story instead. Becky refused as she didn't want the stuffed toys to be torn up. And instead, she asked Anya if she knew that next term they would be split up based on their grades. Anya didn't understand it, so Becky explained that she would be in the OK class while Anya would be in the needs effort class. Anya panicked, as she didn't want to be alone, so Becky asked her to work harder, especially on their coming exams. But Anya thought that it was all over for her. At the same time, another student mentioned the pastry of knowledge, which is known for making everyone who eats it an imperial scholar had appeared in the cafeteria. Anya and Becky were shocked, while the students immediately ran to the cafeteria. Anya and Becky looked at each other, but they immediately ran towards the cafeteria as well. Anya thought that it was her chance to be a genius, while Becky thought it was just a rumor, and she just wanted to try the macaroons made by a royal chef. Anya had no idea what a macaroon was. The duo could finally see where they could buy the pastry. However, Damien's group showed up while rushing to the cafeteria as well, and while they were bickering, the chef announced that there was only one order left. They were determined to get ahead of each other, but George got it before any of them. Damien and Becky asked him to hand over the pastries, so George screamed that he was being mugged before refusing. Damien reminded him that he never returned his pen, while Becky complained that she was forced to sing because of him, so George decided to give them four of the macaroons to get even. However, it wasn't enough for the five of them, so they decided to play a round of Old Maid to see who would miss out on the macaroons. All of them agreed, although Becky had to teach Anya how it works first. Damien thought that the pastry of knowledge would be wasted on Anya, so he worked with Emil to make Anya take the Joker card. Anya was still confused about the rules, so she told everyone the cards she had, and Damien thought that she was really a fool. However, since she could read their minds, she got all the cards she needed and won the game easily. Ewan thought Anya cheated, while Damien thought that she could read minds if she didn't. Anya realized she went too far, and she agreed to play again. Damien decided to change the set of cards and orders, also warning Anya against cheating again. Anya thought it was really close, and she decided to mess up on purpose this time, so her powers wouldn't be discovered. Anya pretended to mess up when she picked the Joker card on purpose, but they called her a moron because of this. Anya was pissed, and she thought it was time to use her killer punch, but Becky knew what she was thinking, so she immediately stopped her. Anya remembered that her father's mission was over if she got expelled, so she calmed down and tried to act like a cool liar similar to her father to win the game. However, Damien could actually tell which card was the Joker because of Anya's expressions, and she even wondered if Damien could actually read minds as well. Anya couldn't get rid of the Joker, while Damien was actually bad with the game as well, so the two of them were left playing. Anya thought that she would stay dumb if she couldn't eat the macaroons, and she would be alone if Becky was in a different class, while Damien was certain of his victory since he could easily predict the card based on her expression. However, when he saw that Anya was already in tears, he decided to lose the game on purpose. Anya was happy and excited to eat the macaroon, but she noticed that Damien was thinking that she was unfair. She offered to share the macaroon with him. Damien blushed, but he refused, saying that he could become an imperial scholar even without it, and Anya needed it because she was stupid. Becky thought he was rude, so she told Anya to just ignore him and just eat the macaroon. After eating it, Anya was suddenly bursting with energy. She was full of energy while studying at home and inside the school, and it was the same when she started answering her quizzes. However, she still got low scores on all of her subjects. Anya thought it was now certain that she would be alone and that the rest of her school life would be dark, but Becky urged her to do her best on their finals. Anya went to her room to sulk, while Yor thought that the exams were really difficult. Lloyd noticed that Anya had improved a little and he was surprised when he noticed that she would have gotten a high score on ancient language if not for her wrong spellings, so he wondered if she learned it from where she grew up. Afterwards, Lloyd made a Hamburg steak to cheer up Anya while Yor made some dessert, so Bond was worried for his life again. Lloyd came to Frankie to get a fake ID and information for his mission. Then he also asked for visual data on a specific group. However, Frankie told him that he would have to wait as his contact has been offed. Lloyd asked if the state security services were responsible for it. 
but Frankie explained that Garden was behind it, which is the group of assassins that existed for ages and were responsible for eliminating traitors under the Shadow Government's orders. Lloyd thought they were just a normal militia, but Frankie explained that a single assassin could take down a whole squad. Lloyd still thought that it was ridiculous, and then he left. However, Frankie stopped him and asked for his help to look for a cat in exchange for his extra labor. He explained that the cat named Kopi belonged to Casey, and she was super sad because he was missing, so he wanted to find the cat to bring her smile back while also trying to get closer to her. However, Lloyd still left, regardless of what he said. He thought Lloyd was heartless, but he was still determined to find the cat even alone. Frankie called all of his contacts to have them look for the cat as well, so he immediately found out that the cat was seen near the city hall. While trying to find the cat, he ran into Yor, who was on her lunch break. And when he explained about the cat, Yor immediately offered to help look for it. She was determined to help, as she thought that Frankie was one of her husband's friends. Frankie was surprised that she was keeping the husband and wife act all the time. But he didn't refuse her help. To look for Kopi, Frankie scattered cat-looking wiretaps that would react to Kopi's bell. Yor was amazed. However, the other cats actually started destroying his gadget, so he immediately lost signal on all of it. Frankie realized that the cats thought that his gadget was an outsider, while Yor thought that the world of cats was also cruel. Afterwards, Frankie took out an equipment that would spread the smell of catnip to attract the cats to their location. Yor thought that he was really talented, and she asked if Frankie was a craftsman. To hide his shady work, Frankie told her that he was just an inventor trying to make the world better with his inventions. At the same time, they noticed countless cats running in their direction. Yor tried to look for Kopi, but the cats started jumping on her. Frankie found him behind the surrounding cats, so he immediately took out another gadget to catch him. However, Kopi easily dodged, so he took out a net launcher disguised as a camera. Because of the launcher's short range, Frankie tried to get close to Kopi, but he got tired running after him before he could get close enough. Frankie was pissed, so he decided to take out his ultimate weapon, which is an armored suit that would give him superhuman powers. But it takes 15 minutes to warm up and start the suit, so he was planted in place while Kopi was running towards the major street for vehicles. However, Yor tore down the back of his armor and threw it to Kopi to stop him from reaching the major street. Kopi was shocked, and he was frozen in place when he saw Yor pounce from behind him before catching him. Yor was happily talking to Kopi, but he was still frozen in fear, while Frankie thought that the armor that was the fruit of ten years of his hard work was gone. However, he told himself that it was a small price to pay if Casey would look his way. Casey was really thankful for Frankie's help in finding Kopi. At the same time, her partner showed up to stop her from crying. Frankie was speechless for a moment, but he told the couple that he would be going. Casey thanked him again as he walked away, while he wished that they would live happily ever after. However, after entering an alley, he started crying and decided to just live for his job. At the same time, Yor's co-workers noticed that she was in a happy mood. They thought that she had received a gift from her husband, and they also told her that she was finally being normal. Yor was glad to hear it, although her co-worker was actually being sarcastic. Afterwards, their superior told Yor that she got a phone call, and the man told her that it was from her usual client. Yor answered the phone while saying her name, and the man on the other side told her that she got a customer while calling her Thorn Princess. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoy this video, and please subscribe so you won't miss the next part. And just comment down any anime you want to see in this channel.